This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, Bruchem Abayim, welcome everyone. We continue in the Archais Chaim of the Rush. We're learning Ois Kuf, number 100. I guess if it's number 100, it's got to be important. You know, it's interesting, the letter Kuf, the Svarim teach us, is a reference to the name of Hashem. Because Kuf is spelled Kuf Vav Pei, numerically valued at 186. 186, which is Gematria Makaim, which is the name of Hashem. And Uf Ois Kuf is the shortest one, and perhaps the most important. Says the Rush, Al Tevahel Ma'asacha. Do not hasten, confound your actions. Do not act with haste. Do not act in a state of confoundment. Uh, Rav Goldberg explains that the emphasis is do not be mevahel ma'asav. Meaning, even in a situation where a person has a reason to be confounded and mevuhal, for example, David HaMelech says, sometimes to start a fanecha, you see Neval, when Hashem hides his face, we are confounded. Or in the Pasuk, V'navshi nivala ma'oid, v'ata Hashem ad masai. In other words, there are times where a person is legitimately, justifiably in a state of bahala. Nevertheless, a person should not act in bahala. Should not act in haste, in, without deliberation. It's brought in the name of Chaim Vital. Do not hastily do any action or say anything until you're deliberate and you ask yourself, should I do this? Should I say this? Or maybe I shouldn't. Kipri hamihiros hapesizos charata. The fruit of haste is regret. The only thing that will come from haste is regret. And there's no way to retrieve it. There's no way to correct it. And we study some of the sins throughout our history. What was the sin of the Chet Ho'egel? My Shabbeinu said, I'll be back in 40 days. So the Jewish people miscalculated. And they figured, okay, it's uh, 40 days are over. And they could not have the patience to wait one more day. And my Shabbeinu came in the sixth hour. My Shabbeinu came uh, a short while after. And that sin, the sin of the of uh, the Egal, which we still pay the price of, which we're still dealing with, it's still something that we are, are accountable for, for. If we trace back the root cause of that sin, it was Bahala. It was the fact that we acted in haste. Now it's interesting, the Archaim HaKadosh says that that was the source of the sin of the Eitz Hadas. There's an opinion that Eitz Hadas was a Geffen. And the Archaim HaKadosh says that the plan was that Adam Arishan was going to wait and he would have eaten from the Eitz Hadas on Shabbos. And he would have made Kiddush on that Geffen, but he couldn't wait. So think about it. The sin of the Egel. The sin of the Eitz Hadas. By the way, Shol HaMelech, the Plishtim, had gathered to attack Klal Yisrael with 30,000 chariots, 6,000 cavalry, more numerous than the sand, and he waited seven days that Shmuel told him, and Shmuel still did not return, and the people left and abandoned Shmuel, uh, the people abandoned Shaul, and, Sh- and uh, Shaul didn't know what to do, so he brought a carbon, and just as he brought the carbon, Shmuel returned. Shmuel said, what do you do? You can't bring a carbon here. So Shaul said, what do you want me to do? The people left me, and you didn't come. And the Plushtim are, they're advancing. And Shmuel said to Shaul, you acted foolishly, you didn't listen to God. Now your malchus will not be sustained. So Shaul lost his whole melucha because of this sin. He was in a matzav of sakana from the plishtim. The people left and he came to Bahala. He acted hastily, he acted without deliberation and he lost his whole malchus. Now, Rav Goldberg cites in the Sefer Oirach Yesharim, he brings that in Kelm, in the, in the base HaTalmud of Kelm, 
They would learn Arches Chaim of the Rosh every day at the end of Shacharis, according to the enactment of the altar of Kelm. And they would say the Arches Chaim stanza by stanza. The Shleach Sibur would say it, and they would repeat after the Shleach Sibur. But when they got up to Al Tevahel Maasecha, they would elongate, they would say it longer, they would say it with more <coughs> emphasis, they would say it with more nigun, with more tune. Why? Because the cornerstone that all the Midas that Kelm was based on was Menuchas Hanefesh, Yishuv Hadas, a clear mind, a clear head. <coughs> Excuse me. The foundation of all good character is based on acting in a level headed manner. And therefore, the stanza of the rush that they placed the most emphasis on was Al Tvahel Ma'asecha, do not confound your actions. Now, in some Svarim, the Girsa is Al Tvahel Al Ma'asecha. And that's the way they said it in Yeshivas, meaning. Don't quickly do an action. Think well if you need to do it. The word va'al means in proximity. Don't do the action immediately. But when it comes, in other words, before you decide to do something, deliberate, wait. Don't just run into it. But once you decide to do the act, execute the act with hey, with Zrizos. In other words, don't run to act, but when you've decided it, with Yishuv Hadas and deliberation that it's appropriate to act, the action should be conducted with energy and quickly. Now, it's interesting, in Mesech the Sanhedrin, Tzadi Beis, Amad Beis, it brings Tani Debei Rabbi Lazar ben Yaakov, even at a time of Sakana, a person should not deviate from his Rabbanos. That means... Uh, it says in Daniel, Ba'adin Govraya Ilech Kaftu Basarvalehain Pashtean Rikabalasain that when Khanani Mishal Azar were thrown into the fire, they went in with their honorable garments, their robes, their kapata, their stramal. In other words, they went in bedecked in their finest rabbinic garb. Why? From here we see that even when a person is about to be killed, Akhil Hashem, that is not a time to lose your equanimity. A person should never become flustered where they lose their equanimity because when a person is in a state of Bahala, they can't act level headed. And Rev Goldberg cites that, in fact, the Kedoy Kelm who were killed at Kiddush Hashem, they did so with great equanimity and with peace of mind without becoming flustered and losing their state of peace of mind. And the reason they were zoicha to that is because they spent their whole life training for this. In Kelm, this was the most important phrase. Al tevahel ma'asecha. Do not hasten your actions. Very interesting. Rav Mordechai Pogermansky, he brings in the name of the Dvar Avram of Kavna, that when they were in the Kavna ghetto, the Dvar Avram would say, we know the famous story of Hanukkah, the Yivanim entered the Heichal, and they contaminated all the oil in the Heichal, and when the Chashmonom were victorious, they searched, and they only found one jug of oil that was signed with the signet of the Kain Gadol. And the Kavna Rav said that he is jealous of the merit of that Kain Gadol, who had the Yishuv Hadas and the level-headedness that in such great turmoil and chaos and tragedy, he had the wherewithal to take one flask of oil that was still sealed and stow it, stow it away so that when the day would come that the Jewish people would return, they would find the jug of oil. Can you imagine in the turmoil, in the chaos, in the tragedy of the time, the, the Kain Gadol had the wherewithal not to lose his equanimity and to plan for the future. Very interesting. Um... Usually, Rav Goldberg says, the manner of the rush is first, he says, Lassor mi to, to turn away from the trap of death. And then he writes what you should do to be illuminated by Arachayim. And here, he just writes in a very abridged version, don't be 
level, don't lose your equanimity, don't be hasty. And he doesn't say, okay, so what should you, yes, do? We'll conclude with this. The Alkut Shemoni brings that some say Yehuda killed Esav. When, when Yitzchak Avinu died, and Yaakov and Esav went to bury Yitzchak, and like it says, Vayikro Esav Esav Yaakov Banav, they were all in the Mara Samach Pela, and they were all crying, and they were all giving cover to Yaakov, and Esav began to go into the Ma'ara, and Yehuda saw, and he saw that Esav went after him, he said, maybe he'll kill my dad. He saw that, e- that Esav wanted to kill Yaakov. Yehuda killed Esav. Now, why didn't he kill him before him? Why didn't he kill him from um, his, Esav's face? Why from behind? Because he looked like Yaakov, so he didn't want to kill him from in front. He killed him from behind. Which means even at a very tenuous time like that, uh, a very uh, perilous time, he did not lose his equanimity and he was able to calculate, even when his, sort of his life was on the line, to be able to act in the, in the most um, proper way as possible. So that's the idea. No matter what the circumstances are, don't lose your equanimity. Okay, Rabbi Isai, we'll see everybody tomorrow. Brach v'atzlacha, have a great day. Kol tov. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.